welcome back. That was really high pitched. Wow. Hi guys! Mm -hmm. Hi guys and welcome back to Irony Completed. Today's video is a super requested video. I asked you guys on Twitter what you wanted to see for this week's videos and the most popular request was a bookshelf tour. So I'm sure you can see my bookshelves behind me. I wasn't 100% sure how to do this in terms of like do I just literally tell you every single book series that I have that might be slightly boring but I'm gonna show you the main two bookshelves that I have. I also have a bookshelf that just has textbooks and books from when I was a child on it which is a lot less interesting than what's on these shelves here. The shelf here to um, this side of me is uh, comic books and a few regular books and also some kind of like geeky merchandise collectible stuff. This bookshelf here is all of my novels, series, plays and poetry books and I also have some autobiographies and coffee table book style things on this bookshelf as well. And just to give you guys um, an idea of how I organise things, the comic book shelf, I just organise it by size because the shelves are a lot shorter. This one is mostly organised alphabetically, however there is some mixing up and muddling up because the shelves are all different heights and some of the books that are taller wouldn't fit on the shelf in the order where they should have been, so it's a little bit muddled up, a little bit random, but mostly it is alphabetical and that's just how I prefer to do things alphabetically by the author's surname just because it's easier for me and it makes sense in my brain probably because I study literature and I'm used to quoting people by their surname and stuff like that so anyway I'm gonna get into the video now um, so I stop rambling and I hope you guys enjoy my bookshelf tour here's an overview of my tour bookcase like I said this is the bookcase that has reading books on it. <laughs> and then this bookcase mostly has collectibles and then at the bottom there are some comic books slash Doctor Who related things. Harry Potter series chilling down there. <laughs> so between the two I have this Doctor Who portrait that I got at the Doctor Who festival. I'll link the artist down below. And then I also have these three postcards that I also got at the festival. There's four of them event, not three. Wow. But I also got these postcards at the festival as well. And then hanging over the bookcase is this British Academy Television Awards sign. Um, I stole it from the red carpet of the TV BAFTAs in 2014. And then my Harry Potter house is Ravenclaw, so I have a Ravenclaw flag. The top shelf of this bookshelf is all Harry Potter related things. So over here I have my chocolate frog from the Harry Potter studio tour, a Hermione goblet, um, a wand that a child gave me once, and then a Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets board game. I also have this bag from the studio tour in London, which if you haven't gone to it then you really really should. And then over here I have some Harry Potter top trumps and some Harry Potter Lego, and then also a like remote control wand thing. In this corner of the second shelf down is japanese -y kinds of stuff. So I have some Studio Ghibli merchandise, some Totoro's and some Totoro playing cards that my uncle got me from the Ghibli Museum in Japan. And then I have some more japanese -y things, some little japanese -y style dolls that I used to collect. And then in the middle I have, this is the Sherlock Holmes duck that my friend Mia got me. And then a Furby because Furbies are terrifying and I don't want that in my bedroom so it lives in this room. I also have some Mighty Boosh figurines. Bolo got burnt by the sun. Look, he's got like a melted bit on his chest because he got burnt by the sun. Uh, then I also have Pascal and then hiding behind Pascal is a Snoopy tin, which is round, which is why Pascal is like holding it up. Then the next shelf down... Oh, I'll get onto my knees. The next shelf down is all Doctor Who related stuff. I have some figurines, some of them are in their packaging, some of them aren't. The one behind in its box is the setup from, god what was the episode called, Hyde? Yeah, from Hyde and it's got holographic interface Clara and the Doctor and then a TARDIS and then I've got Raggedy Man, Matt Smith and have the David Tennant from the, from the specials at the end of his run and then I also have an Amy Pond figurine some mini Daleks. I have a Dalek 
a soft toy that I got from a crane machine at Skane House, and an adipose that I bought from the Doctor Who, Who experience when I went there. And I also have some collectible Doctor Who stamps that my grandma got me. There's all the Doctors on there, but the ones that are facing out are the classic run Doctors. I also have Doctor Who Trivial Pursuit, which is still in its box. I need to play that at some point. <laughs> and then I have a Doctor Who holographic TARDIS thing that I've never taken out of its box either. Um, a Matt Smith bookmark, and then I have this little bobblehead Peter Capaldi, which is so cool. And some more Doctor Who collectible playing card things. I don't know. I used to buy that Doctor Who magazine. Um, and a lot of the stuff I got have came from there. I gave quite a bit of it away. Speaking of Doctor Who, I actually have my tickets from the Doctor Who festival that I went to in November. We were the Daleks, not the Cybermen. Wow, Mum's moving something downstairs and it like <laughs> just vibrated the entire floor. Uh, and then this stack here is all my Doctor Who related books. So I have a handout from the Doctor Who experience, I think. Um, I have some annuals, where is the Doctor, where's Wally style thing, some kind of like encyclopedia style stuff. I also have 50th anniversary 11 Doctors 11 stories, which I haven't read yet, or at least I haven't read all of it. I read some of them, but not all of them. I have a Whoology book and some of the fictional Doctor Who books that get published, which I've never read. I just seem to collect them somehow. And I also have some Doctor Who Festival flyers here and on top of all these other comic books there is the Doctor Who Festival official handbook and a magazine from Forbidden Planet apparently. These are all my small comic books and comic book series down here. So the biggest collection that you'll see is Ranma. I have all the way up to Ranma number 17. I know there's like 30 something books in the series but Ranma 1-2 is my favourite comic book series. I absolutely love it and I need to get around to reading the rest of them but they're really expensive after number 17 for some reason but I will eventually get around to reading the rest of the stories. I also have another manga thing which has like random short comics in it and then I have six Death Note comics which I was really into for a while and then I got bored of it really really quickly so I don't know whether I should try and read these again or whether I got bored for a reason but I enjoyed what I did read and I know people are obsessed with it I've just like never been a massive fan. I also have all six Scott Pilgrim comic books, a couple of mine are signed as well and then I also have some stuff by Hope Larson. I have Mercury and Chiggers, which are both really, really good. This is Soppy by Philippa Price. It comes in a little envelope because it's like a little paper book. Um, and then I have some autograph books. This one's cool because it's got the Hogwarts logo on the front. This was like a journal slash autograph book. It's just a moleskin. And then I got this little... Hogwarts one specifically as an autograph book so it only has autographs in it. And then on the bottom shelf I have some taller comic books. These ones over here, a lot of them are my dad's. Not all of them but quite a few of them on this bottom shelf are my dad's. Uh, I have the Essential Comic Guide there and then I also have Making and Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud which are really really good. They are comic books about reading and making comic books which is <laughs> really really clever and I really like Scott McCloud as an artist. I also have both Kick-Ass comic books. Is there a third one? There might be a third one. I don't know. And then I have some Skeleton Key stuff which was my dad's. I have not read it yet. And Beyond Threshold. And then I have some Sleaze Castle stuff which I also haven't read yet because it was my dad's. Then I have um, Through the Woods, which is a collection of horror comics, which is awesome. Uh, Daughter of Her Father's Eye, which is amazing as well. I talked about these in some book club videos and also Marbles I talked about more recently. Then I have um, Stories from Duckburg. This is like a uh, Donald Duck comic book series that they have in Finland, but this one's in English to teach kids how to read English, so I have it as well. Kuanka is how they say Donald Duck in Finnish, by the way. Uh, then I have this Oddville comic, which I really, really like. And then I have uh, com Complete Peanuts 1969 to 1970. They came out with these like one year collections of the comic strips because it was a weekly comic strip. And I've read more than just this one because my dad has quite a few of them, but this is the only one I have. And Peanuts is actually one of my favourite comic books. I know that's kind of lame. <laughs> 
Uh, I also have a load of Asterix comics down here because Asterix is one of my favourites. And then I have the first two volumes of The Walking Dead. I only read the first one, the second one's not even been unwrapped yet because the first one scared me so much that I'm kind of scared to read the second one. I have a Alice in Wonderland comic which was a anniversary edition that my mum got me for my birthday. Uh, Preludes and Nocturnes, the first volume of Sandman comics which I talked about in my most recent book club. Bone, which is another one of my favourite comic series of all time. Actually, it's probably tied with Ranmar. Ranmar is definitely my favourite, like, Japanese comic series, and Bone is my favourite regular one by Jeff Smith. I have the complete one volume edition. It's amazing. If you haven't read Bone, then you should go and read it. I also have some of the individual volumes and individual comics that my dad passed on to me, but seriously, you should read Bone. It's amazing. Oh, and then I also have on the top there the first volume of the Sin City comic books. Um, here I have two Sherlock Holmes comic books that people have got me for like Christmas and stuff. How to Think Like Sherlock Holmes and the Sherlock Holmes School of Self-Defense, which uh, I've skimmed both of them. They're quite clever and quite cute and they just play off the Sherlock Holmes phenomenon, which as you may well know I'm really into Sherlock Holmes. And then I have the complete Harry Potters. I think I have the complete Harry Potters. Panic because I didn't have all of them then. I only have the last three in heartback though, which is kind of annoying. And then at the end here I also have some other Harry Potter related stuff. I have Tales of Beetle the Bard and I have Harry a History, which Harry a History is about the phenomenon of Harry Potter and its fandom. And then Tales of Beetle the Bard is like a extra canonical piece of work. I also have a first edition um, of Deathly Hallows that's never been opened or anything and it's still in its original packaging. Um, this one's just the one that I've read. I also have another copy for some unknown reason. I also have a lot of comic books. Um, this paper box here, I also have a lot of individual editions of comic books and on this bookshelf, I'm sorry this room's a mess by the way, this room's always a mess because it's just our like spare bedroom as well as our office. I also have some individual editions of comic books back here as well. As in this box, this is mostly Sandman stuff I think. Sandman, Vertigo, Electra and Odds and Sods. These are my dad's that I'm that I'm inheriting early. I don't know. He gave them to me <laughs> uh, when he moved to Finland. But back here, I can't bother to show you, but back here I have some um, Doctor Who magazines and then I also have some individuals of Akiko, Bone and other random stuff like that back there. Um, I can't remember exactly what, but the rest of this bookcase is like files and textbooks and stuff like that, so it's not interesting. If we go back over to this bookcase, how I organise my books is alphabetically because it just makes sense to me to organise things alphabetically by the author's surname. A few bits and bobs are out of order because the shelves are all different heights and certain books wouldn't fit on certain shelves, so... Um, I have Campus Trilogies, Peter Pan, I also have some Charlotte Bronte and some other Bronte stuff. Breathers, which is a zombie book, uh, Clockwork Orange, Postman Always Rings Twice, um, the Mortal Instrument series, which I keep saying I'm going to read and then I just never ever ever do. I always have the Hunger Games books and then um, Half Darkness. And then I have some Roald Dahl stuff because Roald Dahl is one of my favourite childhood authors. I've got like basically most of the things that he wrote. And then I have some, some Charles Dickens, some Daphne du Maurier, I have American Psycho, and, and then I also have some F. Scott Fitzgerald stuff. I actually know what that is because I can't read it from here. The Golden Bow. I've never read this. It's just on my shelf. Some more Victorian-y stuff. I have two of the Seth Graham Smith books where he reimagined classics or historical events. So I've got the Abraham Lincoln one and the Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I have read and they're fine. The film of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies was shit, by the way. Uh, Lord of the Flies. I have all of my Douglas Adams books here because this book was too tall to fit on the top shelf. So this is the complete uh, edition of Hitchhiker's Guide stuff and then I have individual copies of quite a few of the books. I think all of them, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, then I have some Neil Gaiman stuff that wouldn't stand up so I'm lying it down. Trigger Warning, Ocean at the End of the Lane and Stardust, although I do have some more Neil Gaiman stuff downstairs. It's just on my mum's bookshelf because it's it's hers. Um, I've got some Hawthorne, some Hemingway, The Fear by Michael Grant, Wolf by Wolf which I mentioned in my last book club. I also have some John Green stuff. I've only actually read Fault in Our Stars. I've not read the other two, although I will get around to it 
eventually, maybe, god knows. I have King Solomon's Mines, and I have quite a lot of Tom Hardy books for some reason. Got some Henry James here, and then James Joyce stuff over here in the corner. Over here is the Enemy series by Charlie Higson. There's actually a lot more in the series than this, but I haven't got around to buying it yet. I don't know why. I used to get these for Christmas and then and then I just haven't for a while. But the reason I've not been buying them is because I can only find paperback copies and I want to get hardbacks so that they all match. I've got a Moomin book, um, Caroline Kepnes You, some Narnia books. I don't know if that's all of them. I think that's all of them, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, which I read as a kid, and then I have Let the Right One In, which is a great book ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco, which I studied. Uh, Cormac McCarthy stuff, some Ian McEwan stuff. I'm not a massive Ian McEwan fan, honestly, but I have Moby Dick, um, Frankenstein by Spike Milligan, which is really funny. Some Milton, quite a lot of Michael Morpurgo stuff here because I really, really like Michael Morpurgo stuff, especially when I was younger. He writes a lot about animals. Uh, my favourite book that he has written is Kensuke's Kingdom. It's really, really good. Got some Nabokov, some Orwell. I've got more Orwell on another shelf. And then I have some Palaniuk stuff. Choke, Damned and Fight Club. There is a sequel to Damned, I just can't find it anywhere for some reason. Uh, and then I have The Bone Season, which I read half of it and then I got bored. I need to get around to reading this. I also have The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling, which I have never read. I know, I'm the worst Harry Potter fan in the world. I, I like J.K. Rowling and I like her writing style, I just haven't gotten around to reading Casual Vacancy yet. I am currently reading her, um, the script for Cursed Child though, so... That's not in here, by the way. I have like a thing in my bedroom. You'll see it if I do a room tour at some point. I have a thing in my bedroom where all of the books I'm currently reading sit. So I have a couple that are missing from here. But they're, they're being read right now and I couldn't bother to put them on the shelf. <laughs> uh, next shelf down, I got The Bees by Lillian Paul. I really, really like that book. Got the uh, Titus Grown series by Mevin Peake. And then all of this is Philip Pullman because I love Philip Pullman. So I've got the, um, oh god, what's it called? His Dark Materials. His Dark Materials trilogy. And then I have um, Clockwork and Firework Maker's Daughter and Gus Fitter's Ball. I think there are a series, or at least a few of those are a series. Um, I remember my dad reading me those when I was a kid. I have read them as an adult as well, actually. Um, I Was a Rat, which is really funny. Uh, Ruby and the Smoke, which I only ever read this one. I never read the other ones in the series. I think Thunderbolt's Waxwork is actually in a series with Gus Fitter's daughter, so I need to rearrange that. <laughs> oh, and then spring Hill Jack, which is like half comic, half book, and it's so funny. It's really, really good. If you haven't read spring Hill Jack, I would recommend it. I've got some Poe stuff. I've got some more, more Edgar Allan Poe further down. And then I have some Kathy Reich's books. There's a third book in this trilogy I need to read. Psychopath Test. And then I have all of the Divergent books, which it really annoys me that I, um, I have one in hardback and two not. That really annoys me. I've got Frankenstein. I've got the first series of Unfortunate Events book, but none of the others. Gulliver's Travels. I've got a bunch of Adrian Moore books that my mum passed down to me. Uh, Huckleberry Finn, Slaughterhouse-Five, The Colour Purple, Charlotte's Web, uh, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And then I have some Oscar Wilde, and I have some more Oscar Wilde somewhere around here and then I got rid of quite a lot of books recently so I've got a little bit of a space there and then this is the last shelf of fiction stuff and I'll explain how I organized it so this is a series that my friend got me for Secret Santa one year and for not gotten around to reading it yet because I'm a terrible human being um, by Lauren Willig I've never read it but my mum read it and said it was quite good uh, I've got quite a few Diana Wynne Jones books because I really like Howl's Moving Castle and all of that kind of thing. And then lastly for fiction stuff I have the Fifth Wave trilogy. Yay! And then on this side of the shelf is plays and poetry. So all of this is fiction, novels, prose, and then I have plays and poetry over here. And then on the bottom shelf I have like coffee table books, autobiographies, and then big volumes of things that wouldn't fit anywhere else, but I'll explain that in a second. To separate the prose from the plays and poetry, I have, these are all um, empty notebooks, so I've got brand new Wreck This Journal mess and finish this book that I've not actually started yet because I'm using up my other ones first, and then I've got some journals waiting to go 
when my current one gets filled up. And then I've got quite a bit of plays and poetry. I've not got like tons, but I've got quite a bit. So I've got some Alan Bennett, uh, Brian Friel, quite a lot of Shakespeare stuff because I've studied him quite a bit and I quite enjoy his stuff. Um, this is a play that my old film studies teacher gave me. I think I was supposed to borrow it. I just never got around to giving it back. I've uh, got some Tennessee Williams and then all of this over here is poetry so I've got um, 100 Years of Poetry for Children, um, a Green Poetry paint box and Oxford Third Poetry Book. This is all like kids stuff, like the poems I've had since I was a kid but I do still read them occasionally. I've got a Physical Poet, so I've got a War Poems book. Uh, Beowulf is technically poetry so it's here. And then I have The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy which is a poetry series by Tim Burton, I have an E. Cummings poetry series, I have a John Donne uh, poetry thing, I have the Odyssey which is also technically uh, poems and stuff so that's here too, a uh, nonsense book of poetry by Edward Lear which I love and then Sylvia Plath's Ariel which is my favourite series of poems. And finally down here on the last shelf um, I have basically it's like tall books but also autobiographies and just things that wouldn't fit on other shelves essentially so um, I've got a Disney studio story um, coffee table book my mum found it in a charity shop um, I got this Audrey Hepburn portraits of the icon thing that my grandma got me for Christmas because I absolutely adore Audrey Hepburn in case you didn't know um, I've got a like fashion doll thing and then this made up dream novel is something that my dad self-published I have a um, Moomin book it's in Finnish and it's like teaching kids how to learn English but I've been trying to use it to learn Finnish <laughs> uh, and then I have my serial killers book I have some worst case, um, what's this called? Worst case scenario paranormal handbook thing, surviving paranormal experiences, I don't know, it's quite funny, it's just like a jokey thing. And then I also have this anthology of like ghost stories that my grandma got me which is actually really interesting. It's all about ghost sightings and it's like an A to Z, it's really really interesting. Uh, Wit and Wisdom of Cats and Kittens, like a little picture book and so is Dog Shaming, my grandma got me these a couple Christmases ago. I also have this fairy spells book which I've had this book of fairy spells since I was a kid and I just can't bring myself to get rid of it because it's like actual witchcraft like wicker magic-y type stuff and it's really really interesting to me. Oh, try and fit this all in. After that it's mostly autobiographies so I've got the two Russell Brand autobiographies. I have The Mighty Book of Boosh and Scribblings of a Madcap Shambleton, which uh, is by Noel Fielding, and then this is about the Mighty Boosh. Um, Dirty Blonde, which is the Courtney Love Diaries, which is super interesting. It's like a big picture book. Um, Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, which is autobiographical. And then after the Amanda Palmer book, all of these ones up to here are like about directors or film stars and films and stuff because uh, I obviously am really interested in films, so I have a few of those. I've got this book about Tim Burton, I have um, Hitchcock by Truffaut, which is a book of interviews that ha uh, Francois Truffaut did with Alfred Hitchcock. The Cinema of Aki Karazmaki, which is a book about my favourite director. And then I got this for Christmas and I haven't got around to reading it yet. It's Simon Mayo and Mark Commode, The Movie Doctors, because they have a show, a radio show, where they talk about films. And then these are like big books and anthologies and stuff that just wouldn't fit anywhere else because they're so tall so I have an illustrated version of Animal Farm which is illustrated by Ralph Stedman and it's also signed by Ralph Stedman on the year of my birth. Mum found it for like five pound in a charity shop. Um, I have this illustrated Edgar Allan Poe stories and poems book and then I have the complete works of Oscar Wilde and then over here um, underneath Zombie Gami, which is Zombie Origami, and I, I'm shit Origami, so I've never actually done it. <laughs> um, but underneath that, I have a listography book, which is uh, Your Life in Lists, which I really, really like. And then the rest of the stuff here is like used up notebooks, and then like reckless journals and stuff like that. So this is all like used up notebooks that are full from when I was younger. That's basically everything for my main two bookshelves. So that's everything for this bookshelf tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did and you'd like to, then please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you want to follow me on Twitter, Tumblr or Instagram, they will all be linked down in the description along with everything that I'm wearing and what's on my face right now. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.
Bye.